Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Comfort Show. My name is Mo from TurnUpTheComfort.com. We have a full service mechanical company doing plumbing, heating, and cooling services in the Northeast based out of Rockin County. So I've got something for you guys today. Something I put together quickly is all about Radiant. You guys can see I'm rocking my little winter beard over here. And what I want to talk about is three myths of Radiant Heat. Let's get started. So, three myths. I've come up with about a billion. Been in the industry for quite some time. And there is no shortage of BSers. So, myth number one. Myth number one is radiant floors. Floors are not hot. That is true. Radiant floors are not hot. What are they? They are warm. Why are they warm and not hot? Very simple. You have a radiator in your home. If the radiator was always hot, if your forced air vents or your mini splits or whatever you're using, your, your wood stove that you've got over there, we've got a wood pellet stove over there, we heat this, this basically this little area. If you are always going to have an emitter that is hot, it is always going to be giving off heat. Now if you don't need the heat, you're going to overheat the space. So radiant floors are not always going to be hot. If you have an older home that has a higher heat load and requires the heat to run more often and longer, you will end up with hot floors. If your thermostat is satisfied at 70 degrees or 73 degrees or any temperature that you so like, you're not going to get hot floors. So that is why radiant floors are not hot, they are warm. In fact, you don't want your floors to get hot. If your floors get hot, you're going to run into all sorts of issues. You won't be able to step on them. Your body is 95, 97 degrees. I'm no doctor. I'm a doctor of homes, but I'm not a doctor. So if you're going to step on, a, on anything that is hotter than you, it will feel hot. If you go ahead and touch anything that is cooler than you, it will feel cool. So rating floors are not going to be hot. We simply don't run them at a full on all out temperature. We will explain the outdoor reset at a later date, but outdoor reset kind of varies the temperature based over the outdoor conditions. So just to touch upon it, if it's a 50 degree day, you may only have 78 degree water in your floors and that will be able to heat your homes. Of course, it's a calculation and depends on many factors. As the temperature gets colder outside, say five degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Fahrenheit, minus five degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, the water on the floor is gonna have to get hotter in, an, in order to be able to heat your home, kind of match the load. So that is about outdoor reset and heat. But overall, radiant floors are not hot. That is kind of true. It depends. If they are too hot, you're going to not be able to be comfortable by walking on them. Another point is you may ruin your, if you have wood floors or anything, you can buckle your wood. Wood does not like to be overly heated. Wood has to be designed with radiant, you have to choose the proper wood. You also have to install a system properly. If you install a system properly and don't overheat, make the floor too hot, you won't have any issues with your wood. Let's jump up to step number two over here. Got step number two. Radiant. Radi. Needs a different temp for tile and wood. Big myth. Big myth. Go a lot of homes. Oh, here's our low temperature and here's our high temperature. Thank you, sir. Couldn't figure it out. One is set to 100 and one is set to 120. Very simple guys, if you can satisfy the heat load in the home with one temperature, why would you give it two temperatures? Increase parts to break, 
increased complexity, makes no sense. What we look to do is we look to get you guys set up, whether we're doing consulting, whether we're doing the mechanical services, whatever we do for the customer, we look to set everybody up on one temperature. You minimize many issues in the boiler room, you minimize the piping, and you minimize the complexities. Now, on occasion, you will have areas that need higher temperatures. Say a bathroom. There's not enough square footage in a bathroom. How do you get by without the square footage and still get your heat? There are multiple ways. Either you run an increased water temperature, so that same square footage in the, in the bathroom gets to put out a higher BTU load because it's got increased water temperature. That's one. And by water temperature, I mean the water temperature that is in the radiant tubing. That's one. You can also do wall radiant. I have in my home, and I've done for many people in their homes, in wall radiant. When we run out of floor space, nobody ever complains if you do their shower. You end up with a shower that feels fully encapsulated with warmth. Not hot, warmth and comfort. You can add a towel rack. It could be an electrical towel rack. It could be a hydronic heated towel rack. They don't sell all different types of towel racks. They sell towel racks that are designed to heat your towels and warm your towels for comfort. And they sell ones that have enough BTU to actually add to the bathroom. So that's just a couple things on radiant needs a different temperature. You don't need a different temperature. You could have it if you benefit, but that's that. So number three, radiant overheat your home. Let me show you what the answer to that is. B S and that's not my initials because my name is Mo Hirsch, not B S. So what do you got? Radiant overheats your home. Why does it overheat your home? This touches back to what we spoke about about a minute ago two minutes ago, outdoor reset. What happens is without going full on into outdoor reset, because I've got a good one coming for you guys and this is gonna be great. What I'm basically doing for you guys is I'm going to be coming up, I'm going to be setting it with data logs. I plan to data log homes with outdoor reset, without outdoor reset and show the difference of how the boiler chases itself without outdoor reset. And that is not just for a radiant heated home, but that's for a home with baseboard, radiators, or any type of home like that. So, radiant overheats your home. Why does it overheat? You go to the thermostat. It's either set for 70 or whatever number you like, or you'd want to make it 70. So what happens? You go ahead. Thermostat says, hey, we need heat. Boop. Thermostat turns on. The floor gets hot takes time. Radiant is slow to react. It's called a flywheel effect. Radiant slowly goes, heats the floor, which in turn heats the air and the surfaces around it. Thermostat on the wall says, we're good. Boop. Turns off. Now the issue is you've got that mass, that floor that is so hot. So then they tell you, yes, it's normal. When the weather gets warmer, you're going to have to open your windows. Yes, ma'am. And the lady's like, I have such a good heating system that it gets, keeps it so well that I have to open my windows. I don't know about you, but that's not comfort. Every house has heating and or cooling, but not every home is comfortable. That's a line by me. Anyway, how do you combat that? That is outdoor reset. If you are giving the floor just enough heat in the form of hot water to satisfy demand, but not overheat it, you'll end up with a floor that is actually warmer more often and in addition to it being warmer more often doesn't overheat. Why is it warmer more often? Because you're just barely heating the floor with just enough temperature to satisfy the room so it takes longer to heat. When it takes longer to heat, you end up with a warmer floor for longer. So now you're going back to step one where you're going to end up with a floor that is warmer for longer. It's not hot and then cold and hot and cold because it had the wrong temperature in it. That's one. The other thing is about radiant, radiant overheats your home, big myth. 
Big myth. You have to keep radiant at one simple temperature. Set the thermostat and leave it. It is slow to react. It is slow to get warm. It is slow to cool off. And guys, the last thing I got to tell you about radiant is Last thing I gotta tell you about Radiant. If you've ever seen a picture of a Radiant in a room and you're looking at the floor, maybe it looks like that. Maybe they got fancy. But guys, remember this. Everything looks simple until it is not. Just because it looks good just because your contractor put the same amount of tubing, and this dab's on number three before, you don't put the same amount of tubing. You gotta put a heat loss in the home. You basically take that home, figure out exactly how much heat it needs, exactly how much tubing it needs. You can have one room that needs 12 inch centers. What's a center? Center is from here to here on the radiant tube. What is the center? You can maybe run 12 inch. Sometimes we run nine inch, sometimes we run six inch, sometimes we run four inch, and sometimes, and pretty often, we may run 18 inches center to tube, center to center. So, if your contractor, your plumber, your heating guys, your do-it-yourselfer is going ahead and covering everywhere in the home with the same exact amount of tubing, that's like putting the same radiator in every room not counting the window sizes, the does it face north, does it face south, the exposures, skylights, height of the room, doesn't take any of that into account. So if you do a heat loss, that is also going to make sure that Radiant doesn't overheat your home. My name is Mo, turnupthecomfort.com. Make sure to check that out. Download, we've got an ebook on the homepage. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. Mo it's instagram.com forward slash Moe's PNH. That's M-O-E-S-P-A-N-D-H. And you can hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Hirsch. This will be uploaded to our website as well as YouTube. Feel free to call the office for any of our consulting or mechanical needs. Services. 347-460-HEAT. That's 347-460-4328. My name is Mo, and I look forward to somebody on my team helping you guys out. Enjoy your day.